Hi, and thanks for joining me for the Leaky Gut Solution. I really appreciate you taking the time today to sit with me. I'm Dr. Jennifer Sims, owner of Blue Sky Health and Wellness. I'm a practicing chiropractor and uh, functional medicine practitioner now for almost 20 years in uh, Northern Virginia. I uh, hope that you guys get some great information from this. If you need more information, have questions, please, please, please feel free to give my office a call or email me. I will have all that information at the end of the program. So thanks for taking the time to sit with me and let's get started. Let's talk about this leaky gut. Okay. So the importance of gut health is, is can't be overstated. Um, we know that most of the immune system comes from the GI tract. And we know that the gut microbiome consists of bacteria, yeast, fungi, protozoan. Um, just, just, it's not just a digestive health issue. Also organ systems are related to our gut health, our immune system, endocrine system, nervous system, circulatory system, our integumentary system or skin respiratory system, and reproductive system. Some interesting things to note, they are 10 times the amount of bacteria in our body than our own cells, and the majority of them are found within our digestive system. The GI system contains 90% of the bone's happy hormone, which we all know is serotonin. And most importantly, approximately 70% of our immune system is housed in our gut. So you, as you can tell, the gut health doesn't stop at digestion it affects almost every system of our body. So what's this term leaky gut? We hear this a lot. It refers to the uh, intestinal, excuse me, intestinal hypermobility, excuse me, hyperpermeability. Who I'm having some challenges today and has become an increasingly more common health problem um, today than we've ever seen before. You know, with the hyperpermeability, the digestive tract is no longer able to ensure that the good stays in and the bad stays out. These tight junctions or proteins holding the intestinal walls together are loosened. This leaves sizable gaps for undigested food particles, digestive fluids, and toxins to enter the bloodstream. The body reacts to these foreign particles in the blood by producing immune antibodies or pro-inflammatory cells to fight them off. This breeds chronic inflammation, food allergies, and various health issues. Of course, there are signs of improvement, or excuse me, there are no signs of improvement until we actually address the permeability of the gut. So how does the gut even get leaky to begin with? Well, we have to look at uh, what's called the SAD or the standard American diet, which isn't great. A lot of fast food, processed foods. Um, exposure to chemicals, chronic infections, we know that autoimmune uh, diseases are on the rise, gluten and other grains, food allergies, excessive medications, and just a poor management of our daily stress. The standard American diet, or SAD, is really one of the top causes of um, leaky gut or just declining GI issues. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like the general public decided to reformulate the food pyramid, making greens at the, base, at the base, dairy in the middle, and sugar at the top. So none of these foods really should be in our diet. And if they are in small bits, they should not encompass the primary um, component of our diet. So if you find that you're eating out all the time, this is something you really want to look at because you're con contributing to the demise of your GI system. Fruit or frankenfood, whatever you want to call it, um, we need real food. We know that a lot of the prepackaged diets and meals are not food based, they're chemical based. We know that there's um, a lot of um, preservatives added to, the, added to our foods, um, genetically modified foods. There's so many things that are added that we as humans are not able to break down. Some interesting information, the USDA and the FDA have approved approximately 3,000 different food additives, preservatives, and colorings without adequate research on safety. The average person ingests over 150 pounds of additives a year. We are becoming more and more aware of the consequences of this fake food because it's giving us GI issues. 
And we see this a lot in sick and inflamed guts and people. Inflammation is a vital immune response and it's the body's attempt to defend itself against pathogens, heal from injury and repair damaged tissue. Chronic inflammation is not beneficial to our bodies in any way. In fact, it can worsen the body's ability to recognize foreign invaders and puts the body in a state of stress for extended long periods of time. This can cause lasting damage, increased food allergies, and eventually autoimmunity. This type of inflammation can be caused by a lot of things, but largely due to our poor dietary habits. If this inflammation does not get treated, long-term it does cause leaky gut and it makes it harder for your body to repair from damage. Gluten is the general term for a mix of proteins in many grains such as wheat, barley, and rye. It has found itself in much of our food supply disguised in packaged foods featured in most prepared dishes. The consumption of gluten has increased immensely and our health is definitely suffering from it. Gluten allergies, sensitivities, and intolerances are becoming increasingly more common. Gluten-free has become a buzzword within the health community and people are finally beginning to explore how dangerous gluten can be for their health. It makes your gut leaky. Pretty much simply stated, that's what gluten does. Zonulin is a protein found in gluten. It increases the permeability of the gut by further opening the spaces between the cells. The antibodies normally released as a result of leaky gut are accompanied by more antibodies and create antibodies created to attack one of the gluten's more prominent building blocks, glidian. This leads to more inflammation, more bodily confusion, and more health complications. In other words, your body reacts to the overconsumption of gluten by creating a defense mechanism against it. Once this damage has recurred within the digestive tract, it is then distributed throughout the entire body. Aside from contributing to leaky gut, gluten increases inflammation, overall digestive distress, and alters the balance of our microbiome. Our microbiome must be equipped with efficient, healthy bacteria in order to be successful in carrying out its necessary functions. Without proper balance of bacteria, the, the following functions are disrupted. Digestion, immune response, nutrient absorption. I see this a lot, especially in children. You can be feeding them well, but nothing is get, getting digested appropriately, as, as well as adults. Um, and we see that in, in SIBO and other really chronic inflammatory GI issues. Hormone regulation, vitamin production, detoxification, mood management, and many more. Gluten produces both primary and secondary effects. The damage gluten causes that we have talked about so far have mostly been the primary effects. Intestinal, well, excuse me, I can't say that word today, intestinal hyperpermeability or leaky gut. We're just gonna use leaky gut so I don't get tongue tied with that. Um, permeability of the blood brain barrier. The onset of autoimmune diseases like celiac, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. The development of psychological disorders dysbiosis or abnormal bacterial growth, acute allergic responses, and delayed antibody response. While all of these issues are very serious, they too cause further complications. The secondary effects of gluten exposure can cause severe nutrient deficiencies such as iron and vitamin B12, systemic inflammation leading to organ and tissue breakdown. This may seem a bit redundant and we keep coming back to how our body acts on gluten, but it is one of the most important pieces of information you can take from this class. Gluten is a major component of the leaky gut cycle. It is present in the onset, the maintenance and progression of this damaging condition and should not be taken lightly. As you can probably guess, gluten's path to disease is pretty direct. The first step is when gluten's contribution goes unnoticed. At this point, it's likely there are no known symptoms. This is where most people will assume that gluten won't hurt them and therefore can eat it with no problem. Unfortunately, the lack of apparent symptoms does not mean that the gluten doesn't hurt your gut. In fact, it takes exposure over time and the accumulation of damage before a leaky gut will be noticeable. For those cutting out gluten before they feel any physical discomfort, they are still treating an underlying issue, even if they can't quite feel it yet. 
The next step is the progression of subclinical problems. This is where leaky gut truly begins to develop. Often the first thing that will be noticed is increased food and, and environmental allergies. Digestive distress may begin to become more frequent. Unfortunately, it's not, it is common for people to still avoid blaming gluten <clears throat> for their discomfort. The last step is recognizing the problem. However, it is not usually recognizing gluten as the problem, but the acknowledgement of the problem that gluten has caused. For example, if someone is diagnosed with a chronic disease or develops inflammatory changes, most medical doctors will, be, will begin treating these conditions rather than examining the actual origin of the disease. It's a shame that this happens because if gluten was recognized as one of the main problem, problems during the early stage, then a lot of these health issues could be avoided completely. Pesticides. Much like the additives and preservatives flooding our food supply, pesticides are also a big part of what's on our plates. There are 3 million tons of pesticides used worldwide each year, and more than 16,000 chemicals involved in the production of these pesticides. Studies to ensure this, their safety on humans have all been limited, whereas some have no documented research at all. While we're not entirely sure of the safety on human health, we do recognize strong links between pesticide exposure and nervous system disorders, immune system suppression, reproductive damage, hormonal imbalances, thyroid issues, type two diabetes, obesity, asthma, migraine headaches, attention disorders, and developmental delays in children. The magnitudes that pesticides along with steroid hormones, antibiotics, and exocytotoxins show up in our food supply is truly frightening if you sit down and you think about it. Um, <clears throat> drugs. Medication is severely overprescribed in the current medical model used today. Medical programs train doctors to medicate symptoms even when they are unsure of the actual cause. This is in the short term seem to work because patients do experience temporary relief from their discomfort. However, what isn't taken into account is how these excessive prescriptions have affected our bodies. For example, statin drugs used to lower cholesterol have been shown to lower vitamin D and CoQ10 levels. While it may be lowering cholesterol, it is simultaneously causing nutrient deficiencies, muscle fatigue, increased blood pressure, and weakened immunity. Painkillers like ibuprofen, naproxen, and aspirin contribute to vitamin C and iron deficiencies, leaving one vulnerable to disease and eroding the mucosal lining of the stomach. Acid reduction medications hinder the, the digestion of protein, calcium, and vitamin B12, often causing chronic pain problems. These are your over-the-counter protonics like Prilosec, Nexium, and Tums, and one of the main causes of GI dysfunction that we are seeing in clinical practice today. Long-term use of antidepressants too significantly impacts the gut's motility and can cause digestive distress. Lastly, it's important to note that almost all meds are unable to differentiate between the good bacteria in our guts and illnesses and the illnesses that they're trying to actually attack. That results in an altered microbiome and it puts you at a greater risk for more infections. As you can tell, drugs offer a lot of unintended consequences that can affect our health very badly. Now, clearly there are some situations where drugs are indicated and needed, especially in life-threatening conditions and or surgical situations. But when you're not dealing with an immediate emergency situation, it's best to treat the underlying cause than to mask it with medications for symptom relief. There are five critical elements of healthy gut function. In order from the outermost layer of defense, they include what's called the mucosal IgA, otherwise known as immunoglobulin A. This antibody is found in the mucous membranes it is considered your gut's first line of defense against toxins. Next are tight junctions. These are small proteins that are responsible, responsible for holding the gut cells together. This is what most directly affect, is directly affected by leaky gut syndrome. GALT or gastro-associated lymphoid tissue, G-A-L-T. 
This is the gut's concentrated immune system. And in fact, 70% of our immune system altogether. This is the gut's last and most powerful layer of defense. The gut's accessory defense includes friendly bacteria. As we have talked earlier, we have more bacteria in our bodies than we do in our own cells. This bacteria can communicate with gall, warning it of potential danger. Stomach acid. This is absolutely essential for the digestion and absorption of nutrients and defense against infections. If there's any dysfunction throughout your gut's line of defense, these five primary barriers need to be evaluated in order to heal the condition properly. The first step of healing is ruling out the fundamental causes of leaky gut. It's important to recognize that this is very rarely only one cause, but a combination of several things causing the damage. The first thing we wanna rule out are vitamin deficiencies, and we need to do that by functional nutritional testing. Next, we wanna rule out infectious pathogens, and that can be done by blood and GI tract tests. Heavy metal toxicity can be checked by urine or not as effectively by hair testing. I personally am not a big fan of hair testing, but it is a way to check for heavy metal toxicity. Gluten sensitivity, we can do that through HLA, HLA-DQ or genetic testing that actually can be run um, through LabCorp. Environmental allergies via skin or blood tests. If any of these come back positive, you have your first step of instructions to start getting down to the root cause. Are we address, addressing a nutritional deficiency? Do we need to make dietary changes? Limit our exposure to allergies? allergens, consider and possibly a detox protocol. Once you have a better understanding of your body's unique needs, then you can actually form a plan to get better. So the functional four is just one way to look at the body. There are multiple ways to do this. This is just kind of giving you guys an outline of what, what order and, and way to look at your body when we're looking at it from what do we do to start healing ourselves. We want to first remove or eliminate problem foods, toxins, low-grade infections, and oxidative stresses on our bodies. Then we wanted to go into the repair phase where we start introducing a clean diet with essential nutrients that our body needs. Then we need to restore or put the good healthy bacteria uh, back in proper balance in our GI systems. And then we wanna replace Replace digestive enzymes, antioxidants, and immune-boosting vitamins to promote sustainability and healthy digestion. We as functional medicine practitioners are trained in how to do this. There is a very systematic way to do this and skipping steps or jumping ahead will not be effective. So for example, I have patients oftentimes who wanna do heavy metal detoxification. And I never recommend that until we know that we've gone through all the other phases to support a heavy metal detoxification. Doing a heavy metal detoxification in a GI system that's sick is going to make you actually more sick. So there are ways to do this and it really needs to be done under the supervision of a practicing practitioner who understands how to do this. At this point, you've already removed all the things that are bad that you know about in your diet, but you also wanna think about looking at pesticides on foods genetically modified organisms, unnecessary meds, or even looking at your unnatural household cleaners. One website I strongly recommend that you guys become familiar with is environmentalworkinggroup.org or www.ewg.org. On that site, you can certainly put in products in your home or products that you're using on your skin. Um, and see if anything that you're using in your day-to-day -day life is actually increasing your risk of cancer or increasing your chemical exposure. It's a fantastic site. It is free. There is even an app you can download on your phone to help you choose what fruits and vegetables to purchase that have less pesticides, which vegetables and fruits you should um, absolutely not purchase, which ones you should. It's constantly being update, updated it, it, and it is a fantastic resource to kind of see how to decrease or eliminate your toxin exposure. So once you have an understanding on what 
what should be removed from your diet and your daily life. Now you want to work on calming the chronic inflammation and reintroducing nutritious foods back into your diet and digestive enzymes and probiotics. And anybody who sees me knows I'm a huge fan of high levels of fiber, um, vitamins, minerals, and acids. For some people, these steps may mean implementing intermittent fasting, supplements, or personalized diet plans that cater to their specific health needs. Now, to be clear, this does not mean getting on a diet. It means structuring a diet that is good and nurturing for you specifically, not a quick weight loss program. That's not effective, and it can actually cause more damage. So we really want to start looking at what's, our bodies are unique, and we really need to start looking at what's what we specifically need, not works, not what works for other people. And once again, it's highly recommended that you do this with somebody that can guide you appropriately to get you to those next steps and can tell you when you should go on to the next steps. Uh, new, supplements are extremely important because quite frankly, there's a lot of things we just can't get in our diets and we live far from the equator in here on the East Coast, so we're not getting usable sunlight. Um, to get that vitamin D and other things that we need. So it is important to add the appropriate supplements. But make no mistake, I'm not saying that you should take a bunch of supplements to replace good eating. They're supplements. They're designed to supplement your diet, not become your diet. So some of the things you might want to look at are pre and post probiotics. And a little note about that, not everybody can handle prebiotics. So just because you're reading about them doesn't mean that you need to start taking them. In some patients, prebiotics can cause more inflammation in the beginning stages of healing. And that really needs to be addressed. Um, and in some disease processes, probiotics will actually make you sicker. So we need to talk about that and see specifically what's going on with you. Digestive enzymes, fiber, collagen, that's become a huge thing turmeric, L-glutamine, and quercetin. These are just suggestions. By no means are they a, a, you know, a blueprint of what you should be taking, but these are just some broad spectrum suggestions. You should not rely solely on supplements. And like I said, you know, eating pills is not a replacement for having a good diet. This slide's just giving us you know, a little bit of a visual of what I've been talking about here with you. We have our environmental triggers, that cause antigens. Then we have the intestinal lining, that IgA we talked about. It gets inflamed. The barrier in our GI system gets disrupted. Uh, then we have micro, microbial components with immune activating um, potential to damage those tight junctions, that GALT system. And then that ends up with us having a nutrient absorption problem. These are my patients who are eating really well but things are not, either they're chronically constipated or they can see everything they eat when they use the bathroom. There is a severe malabsorption syndrome. So we have to look at you guys very specifically and get really good history and details um, to figure out how to best support your specific issues. Now, once you go through this whole process, right, you wanna maintain it. You spent time, you spent money, resources, lifestyle modifications. This is not something that is a six week thing and you're fine. This is a lifestyle thing, right? So you wanna maintain your health. So if you know that there's certain things that trigger inflammation in your body, then you wanna stay off of them long-term. You don't wanna keep adding them back in. It would be nice to think that everybody can eat everything and not have inflammation. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. So figuring out what you need to maintain your health is important. And creating a lifestyle change is really more important because we do know with chronic stress, eating the best, taking supplements, if you're a patient under chronic long-term stress, I promise you no vitamin or food will heal your digestive system. So please hear me when I say taking the time to figure out your lifestyle and how to create a, a more calmer being for you is really going to ultimately be one of the best ways to maintain your, your overall health. So although there's a lot of research on the dangers of leaky gut, it's still considered a medical mystery. We do not know everything. I do not claim by any means to know how everything works, but we know enough to know how powerful the GI system is and how important it is in maintaining health and, and, and immunity. 
So it is important to get the proper testing done. Reading an article and then thinking that you need to take a supplement is not proper testing. You really need to take the time to do lab work if that's, you know, if that's blood work, if, that, if we need to address your GI system, if that's a stool test, if we need to look at your liver detoxification, that's a urine test. We really need to have data. Data is an emotional. Data is something that we can see changes in and data is something that can show our progress. So take the time to work with someone who, who can give you that information and who can give you proper, proper guidance in all this. I appreciate you taking the time with me today to talk about such a huge topic. And I know I did not hit on everything and I know you probably have a lot of questions. So I encourage you to email me. You can contact me directly at jen at blueskyhealthandwellness.com. You can call my office at 703-975-9144, or you can check out our website at blueskyhealthandwellness, all one word, dot com. Um, I encourage you to log on or um, listen to the replays of the webinar series that we're doing for the year. The topics are listed under webinars on my homepage. So if there's something that interests you, register. If for some reason you can't make it, not a problem. We are saving and recording these webinars so we can share them with you guys. Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, I said, please don't hesitate to reach out and I will do my best to get back to you and, um, you know, provide you with a timely answer or guide you into the right direction. Thank you so much. And it was great chatting with you. And I will see you on the next webinar. Take care.